Hi there. You know what? I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to rigmarole you around. I absolutely love children's horror media. I'm the type of horror guy that, you know, enjoys having a little fun in their spooks. And hey, you know what? I also like nostalgia. So who better to capture those two things than my boy, R.L. Stein. Sure, I like Clive Barker and I like Stephen King, but I wouldn't want them to be my dad. And even though R.L. Stein kind of has like a spooky energy, it seems like he's really good at tucking you in. Now I grew up reading the Goosebumps book, but I never really watched a show because I saw one episode when I was six and it horrified me, so I stayed away from it. And then when I was in middle school, the episodes were made available and I checked them out. And I know they're for little baby boys, but there's something about the fact that they're so earnest and I haven't seen them since I watched the whole series when I was a lonely boy. So we're gonna check out and rewatch some of the most famous episodes starting with The Haunted Mask. I remember this one being like, you know, the iconic one, the really good one. So I'm excited to finally see it again. This, I remember these boys. Oh, oh. Hello, I'm R.L. Stein. I write- The mole itself. The mole itself. You know it's a great episode if R.L.'s introducing it. And I believe this is the first episode of the show and it's a two-parter, it's like 44 minutes. So I think this one has the reputation of being like the most well-produced, you know, most scariest, I guess. Is it, the, is it the most goosebump? I remember Carly Beth, I remember the creepy shop guy, I remember uh, the damn floating heads, we'll get to it. I'm assuming if you're watching this, then you've probably already seen the show. I'll be talking it for most of it to avoid copyright. Uh, because, you know, even though I'm giving free press, Scholastic out here probably gonna be hating on me. And you know what, that's fine. I only went to your book fair a million times. <laughs> it was totally not funny. I'm sorry. I was such a Carly Beth as a kid. I really relate to this episode because I was such a Carly Beth. I'm like, don't talk about Bigfoot when the sun go down. Okay, now here's the problem. I decided to do this and I'm home alone right now and it didn't cross my mind that there's a possibility I actually get scared by this. <laughs> oh no, our house coming for me tonight. I love you. Why else would I make it? The Carly Bear? It smiled at me. Uh, what is up with you? That is you. genuinely chilling. That was really, really scary. That's really scary, because they didn't show it. Dude, that was really scary. Oh, God. It's gonna be a false jump scare, because it's literally every single chapter in Goosebumps is a jump scare at the end, or a cliffhanger, and this time, it's a duck. Goosebumps as a whole captures and I wasn't really a 90s kid, I was born late 90s, so I wouldn't qualify myself as that, but Goosebumps captures what is probably the best decade for kids and fun spooky stuff ever. You know, Goosebumps, Are You Afraid of the Dark, you know, kind of bleeding over, you had stuff like Courage, the Cowardly Dog. Just a, a healthy dose, you know, Hocus Pocus, just a decade that loved Halloween. It, I truly appreciate how the 90s just went full spook. I read some trivia about this episode before I started watching it, and the only notable uh, trivia was that Carly Best Actress truly wanted to go method, go Daniel Day-Lewis, um, and she actually bit into a live worm. I bet even RL was like, what kind of madness are we dealing with? This girl is so method. It's, oh my God, she's reading Friendship Magazine. <laughs> oh, that's rough, buddy. I guess because it's a two-parter, but there is a lot of time devoted to Carly Beth's <laughs> elementary struggles, which, you know, we can all relate to. If you're the type of person that grows up to watch Goosebumps alone in their early 20s, I think you can relate to what Carly Beth is going through right now. <laughs> Sweet, we got uh, Chewbacca with astigmatism. I'm really trying to make jokes because I'm starting to get scared. Getting a little scared. Oh man, they have Larry David too. New season to curve, come on Larry. Imagine if she put on Larry David, old man Jewish face, and just turned into him, and it turned into season one of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Okay, now the memories are starting to flood back. These things are horrifying, 
They move so creepy, and I think children specifically really catch on to that uncanny valley uh, movement specifically, you know. Claymation and like early unpolished CGI. Uh, see, I'm getting distracted because I'm scared. Yeah, just the way they move, you know, animation of a certain type, it really can be very unsettling. Some of these masks are really disgusting. Like, they look like the Seven Deadly Sins. I don't know if that's intentional. I also don't know which one the haunted mask is supposed to represent of the sins. There's not a lizard looking sin, I don't think. Maybe there is. Sloth? No, that would look like a sloth, not a lizard. Oh, that's... See, that's scary too. Because he's like, all right, if you want it, you're lost. That's pretty spooky. See, there's been a couple moments that are actually legit. I mean, you know, for a kid show. And Goosebumps is no Are You Afraid of the Darks in terms of how intense things can get. The pool episode, Dead Man's Float of Are You Afraid of the Dark, is still, I, I watched that episode maybe like last year for Halloween at a party. And still, when I went to bed that night, I'm like, that is a messed up face. Oh man, we got the low-budget Spider-Man. No. Oh no, it's Spider-Man and Green Goblin. Oh no. Oh come on, stop kidding around, Curly Fat. This is the, I'm yeah, not kidding around. That's the scary, scary concept from this episode. Truly, anything with claustrophobia. I think the voice changes at one point. I think at one point she's like, "Those aren't my eyes." And oh god, Carly and Beth head on a. Dick is really weird imagery and like a really deep metaphor. I didn't know RL could go this deep. I know him best for like kids jokes and dumb puppets like jumping at people. So we're getting into this stuff about like identity, demonic possessions. Stein, what is up my guy? I wanna take this moment to just say, I've been joking, but I, I love R.L. Stein so much. I wasn't kidding when I said I wanted to tuck me in. And I know that'd be inappropriate as I am a fan of his. And that crosses a line. But honestly, you know, I know Goosebumps is like this whole big thing. But some of his other books, his Fear Street stuff, you know, his older age stuff, is, is good and has good concepts. But more so than any of that, he just seems like the most pleasant guy. If you want just a stress-free, no-issue Twitter follow... You gotta be following R.L. Stein. He'll just make you happy all the time. She really does look like the Green Goblin in the first Spider-Man movie. But, like, what it should be. Who would have thought that the Haunted Mask would do a better comic-accurate version of the Green Goblin than Sam Raimi? That's a horrifying thought. She takes off the mask at the end and it's a Willem Dafoe. Oh, think about it, hero. The Haunted Mask is true evil, but really what it just wants to do is throw some pumpkins, throw some skeletons, costumes, costume shenanigans. That's what Halloween's all about, people. I'm glad we finally get a piece of media to teach the kids how to do it. <laughs> I gotta say, the physicality on Carly Bess Actress, assuming she is in the suit, suit, in the Iron Man suit, assuming she is in the Haunted Mask, it's really good. It's really... She's torting all creepy. I dig it. If she shows up in the background of the mist, that's I mean, that's not okay. That's that's my nightmare. Oh no, God no! Come on, man. No matter how like kid friendly it is, that stuff I hate. I hate that. Oh God, I hate that. Oh, that mask is dripping wet, sweating to the oldies. That mask is. Apologize to her. Oh, that's disgusting. See, I don't like, like, that's actually genuine, cre genuinely creepy that she's like, don't apologize to me, apologize to Carly Beth. Tips head. That was really scary. I, oh, God, her reaction. Her reaction. I almost wanted, <laughs> did you see? I instinctively went to my headphones to take it out. Cause I don't want to hear Carly Beth like be scared. <laughs> that was really good. 
somebody, and this wasn't my idea, but I heard this and I thought it was genius. I can't remember who, but somebody was talking about they had an idea for a podcast where they get all the Goosebumps kids. Like each episode would be a kid that's starting a Goosebumps episode and just talk about what the production was like. I would love to listen to that podcast to hear what Carly Beth had to say. Why'd you eat the worm for real, Carly Beth? Where's your sculpture? I, just, I think that would be a genius podcast. That'd be so good. You could get. I think, wasn't Ryan Gosling in Goosebumps? I think he was. Um, Hayden Christensen is in Night Living Dummy Part 3. We're going to be watching Part 2. If you like the video, I'll happily do more and do Night Living Dummy Part 3 because I absolutely love that episode and not just because I can make Star Wars prequel memes throughout the whole time. I was going to make another joke and I... Oh, what is it? A mask. Remember this happened. Well, come on. This is really? the scariest idea. Can't get it off? It's like it stuck to I, my I skin. I just got the chills. Well, it's gonna That's sound such a, a horrifying <laughs> idea. Uh, she's such a good actress. And it's when she, the other girl says, "There's it just melds into your skin. That's so scary. Truly, if I would have seen this when I was like six or seven, I know some people watched it when they were young. Like I said, I was a Carly Beth, so this this one I'd like have to go to the hospital. Yeah, right here. This oh. is. What's the matter? There's no bottom to this mask. There's no line in between the mask and your skin. There's no place I can reach my hand in. That's crazy. That's yeah, just what crazy. A, what a scary concept. This shot is scary because it's like, <laughs> he keeps pulling it down. It's like, it's scary because we might be arrested for watching this. YouTube is going to demonetize the hell out of this for showing <laughs> spooky cleave. There it is. She just said, uh, those aren't my eyes. I hate that line. <laughs> I think most of this has just been me saying, I hate this. But I truly am having a very uh, good time getting scared. Oh, it was the thing that he hates his stupid Bill Murray acne patch that he wants to make new a new face for himself. But something went wrong. I changed. I became hideous. If it is Carly Beth's actress in that mask, I don't. I think a lot of people don't quite understand how long it takes to shoot something like this, even as crude as it is. So, my god, props to Carly Beth for wearing that disgusting mask throughout all these days of production. That's gotta be tough. I can't even wear one of those things for 20 minutes. But the faults were inside me. That's what infected the faces, turned them into monsters. Wait, is he wearing a mask like right this now? this one is turning now. Oh, that's pretty Very good. Soon. I honestly didn't remember that. So he wore all those masks and they turned gross. <laughs> yes, it's, it's not, it's just the way they move. I remember this part really taps in, really captures like a fever dream feeling. Look at the way they're moving. It's just, it's so dreamlike. Or should I say nightmare-like? It's really effective even right now. We're gonna watch um, *Night Living Dummy* after this, and there's no way there's like this much subtext about like identity, loving yourself, being who you are, not hiding. <laughs> there's no way *Night Living Dummy* has that. I think the subtext of that one is, oh no, it's a dummy. Oh, thank God. Coming off. That thing would be so sweaty. Sometimes when I wear those masks, I feel like I'm Just in the haunted mask. mask. Not because it's like, you know, Just demonic and it's attaching to my soul, but I sweat so much it's an adhesive glue. And honestly, I'd rather go through what she just went through than having to like feel the sweat friction across my face. Symbol of love. That head is not a symbol of love. That is that head is a symbol of mom's needs to find a, a full-time job because this part-time is clearly messing her up. She's making weird stuff. <laughs> oh. 
Uh, Noah, don't put on that mask. Don't worry, I won't. Two. Trick or treat! <laughs> Ugh. Now that wasn't too scary. No was it? way. What's That's how it family? ends. Mom, Dad, what did you think? That's how it ends. I think what they the? like. I hope you did too. What is this Beetlejuice yeah, too? What was that? Everyone. <laughs> okay. What was that ending? They spend 44 minutes really taking their time to go into like character stuff, genuinely good scares, and then, hey, don't put on that mask, annoying little brother. I won't, puts on mask. Okay, so that ends. He's doomed to hell, I guess, because there's no resolution. Cut to R.L. Stein. Apparently he was watching with his parents. Um, killed them. <laughs> killed his parents. Didn't seem to care. Uh, told us to have a spooky day and we're out. God damn it, I love this show. I love the fact how often the show will end with, oh, everyone's gonna die, we're haunted forever. I love RL. I'd watch it with the RL. It'll kill your parents, but I can handle it. All right, so we're gonna move on to Night of the Living Dummy part two. Uh, they didn't make part one into an episode, so we're, we go right into part two. As you can see, we have the theme song. God bless. We never get slime intros anymore. Slime-based logos, they were everywhere in the late 90s and early 2000s. Everything was slime, I swear to God. What happened to slime? I've seen this episode uh, and I only remember Slappy. I don't remember any of this. I don't remember this gross Wallace Shawn looking dad. How many times do I have to tell you not to try on my clothes? That's not very nice. All right, well, this is clearly messed up, and I already want Slappy to kill the entire family. Not that they're necessarily bad people, but the family has gotten so toxic, clearly, that, you know, there's no coming back from this, I don't think. So, um, just, yeah, just let it rip. The chainsaw, that is. <laughs> Does Slappy use a chainsaw? To have this like family show and tell whole thing um, is horrifying, and I would run away at the age of eight if my family made me do this. This is this is sucks. This is garbage. Wow, he's great. There he is. Slappy. Slappy himself. Daddy, thank you. Slappy, daddy. Through Mary, Donna, Loma. I pray to God there's someone out there that has Slappy's magic words tattooed on their body. If nothing else, I need that on a shirt. That's, that'd be so great. I don't anticipate this one being anywhere near as scary, nice but you, how could I not? This is an iconic episode. I've seen Night of the Living Dummy Part 3 a lot more, mostly because I just love Hayden Christensen and everything. Uh, and I believe Hayden Christensen turns into a puppet at the end of that episode. And I thought his acting was wooden. What am I looking at? Am I looking at Slappy's genitals right now? Oh, is it pa <laughs> It's a paintbrush, probably. Slappy's a watercolor man. I found this out This is the I most dysfunctional you. family of all time. I didn't. Why would I? So who did Actually, based on just all of Goosebumps, it seems to me that RL is not a fan of kids. He's always maiming them or killing them. I mean, neither of those things, because it's Goosebumps, but implied, like, death or worse than death fates. I don't know if RL has any kids. Could you imagine him as a dad? He's trying to, like, teach you how to catch a ball and he can't stop staring at his mole. Hey, Slappy, please stop breaking the fourth wall. That's acting 101, you stupid... Oh, my God. What is this, every night? Kids, it's five o'clock. Time to give you traumatic memories. This guy. This guy's a villain if I ever saw one. If the Coen brothers or someone like that made a movie about a pedophile. And I know that's like lowbrow, but just look at this man's face. In that hat. Why don't you give up brushes and try using the roller? Is this supposed to be funny? No, I can't stop him. Oh, he's, he's clenching on her hands. 
Oh, he's just like kegling down on her hands. Slappy's kegel game is strong. He said he couldn't breathe in there. Okay, that's pretty good. He said he couldn't breathe in here. Let's see, that's where Goosebumps genuinely has good moments sometimes like that. It's all the implication, the off screen stuff. What's with the highly motorized eyes? <laughs> The problem is that family sucks. Um, Slappy is not scary, <laughs> but he's also not very funny in this episode yet. Like he should be like roasting the hell out of people, but like with good lines, you know, he should, he should really be getting into them. It should be like a drag show. Slappy and drag, get on it. The soundtrack to this episode is, and I'm being serious, is primarily just farts. Just a lot of, just a lot of <laughs> We got Wallace Shawn, hot 90s wife, Slappy, who honestly Slappy is the most attractive one in this family, I swear to God. Never gonna is it just me again. or is Slappy Ever. getting bigger? Oh, he's gonna hang out with Pennywise. Popcorn? I can't tell you how much money I would pay to watch Slappy and Pennywise hang out instead of the worst CW family drama I've ever seen in my entire life. That shot's pretty cool. I, that's a that's an iconic goosebump shot. Doing some exorcist head spinning. What's going on? Great read, kid. Take two? No, I think we're good. I wish Slappy directed this episode. You know, he's an actor and director. It's like a Kevin Costner type. I'm so rooting for Slappy right now. He doesn't have muscles, but I want him to kill. <laughs> what? What happened? He got gassed. That's why the soundtrack was all farts, because he had farts inside him. Who got him? Oh, wait. What was that? Oh god, I remember now. You're gonna wanna pay oh god. You're gonna pay attention to this. If you didn't do it, then who <laughs> It's good to be back in the family again. <laughs> No! <laughs> oh. It's great to be part of the family. First of all, the shot of the puppet that saved them from Slappy. That was the scariest part of the whole episode. That was horrifying. For one second, they had some spookiness. And then Goofy came out of his mouth. Goodness, okay, well, I still love the show in theory, but I'd highly uh, advise against watching too many episodes in a row. It's 90s, it's Canadian, who knows what RL was up to at the time, so you can only take so much. That being said, it was really fun to check it out again. I still love what Goosebumps represents. I still love RL Stein. Please be my father. Um, be my spook daddy. My spatty. No. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more, let me know. I'd especially love to do some episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Um, I truly love that show. And there are actually some real bangers in that show that I'd, I'd love to see again. And with that, I'll just say, viewer beware, you were in for a scare, and I think Slappy has dope-ass hair. <laughs>